Hello, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Black Shirt Breakdown. My name is Steve Mark. I'm a staff writer at Inside Nebraska, and I am joined, as always, by the great Jay Foreman, an NFL veteran and former Nebraska Black Shirt. Jay, we have uh, a kind of a special edition of the Black Shirt Breakdown. We're not talking about a game. Uh, Nebraska had a bye week. Um, so today we will be um, talking about Nebraska's starting quarterback, Heinrich Harburg. I uh, just picked out a few of the, the throws, and we're going to have Jay break them down today um some good throws and some not so good throws because we know that Heinrich Harburg is in his third year with the program but it's just his first actually playing on the field getting some real live game action with live bullets so uh Jay first of all let's get it out of the way before we get into some of these Harburg throws what did you do in your bye week without a Husker game on Saturday uh well I mean I watched a lot of football which was great you know and uh didn't get to get outside much. Obviously, it was it was definitely cold, and so that yeah. uh, the bye week came good for not only myself but Nebraska because you didn't have to play in, in weather like that. But uh, was able to re relax and much like the team, probably reset and uh, you know just kind of get ready for the last six weeks. You know, look, we get to talk about it always after, so we're always kind of right. And uh, but then also a little bit uh, of me is excited for this team with the po like possibility that they can possibly achieve realistic mm -hmm. possibility that they can achieve with the dynamics of a first year staff coach and a whole new regime, you know, it couldn't be teed up any more perfect for Nebraska and hopefully they take advantage of it. You mentioned resetting. So back when you played, um, what was the bi, bi week like? Like what did you guys, <laughs> what did you guys do for the, for the uh, bi week? Hey Steve, I hated the bi week. Okay. I hated the bi week. Mm -hmm. Coach Osborne and the, we would go back to spring ball. It was heavy fundamentals which was great you know i mean yeah. don't get me wrong and we look that's why we won three national champions but championships mm -hmm. heavy fundamentals pads getting after it a little bit longer practices so we 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 got better during the bye week but you know what he and uh you, you know sometimes if the bye week was a little bit later we knew they, they had to recruit so you know look it, the statue's limitations over so we always knew when T.O. would be gone or Coach McBride, we'd get a little bit easier practice and uh, yeah. be able to skate through some stuff. But mm -hmm. we went to work, man, and I think that's what you have to do. You have to get after it. You you have to grow or you have to get better, and you can get better by, you know, watching the tape, walkthroughs. You just got to have the right intent and use the bye week for what it is. It, it, you just can't use – and I felt like this prior regimes and years that the bye week was like – sprint like the season was over mm -hmm. and then that's why you saw like stumbling out of the bye week oh well you didn't get better out of the bye week and there was chance times i think one time i think uh, frost and those guys played wisconsin after the bye week i felt like that was their first like the 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 game plan offensively was really good mm -hmm. but overall i think you got to have the team understand we got to lock in for these three days and we got to also do extra work now we get time off right where we don't have to be here you know, for six, seven hours, but we need to put a couple hours in every day because, um, you know, technically it's not your job, but you know, it is your job to put, put forth your best effort. So hopefully the players use it the right way and the coaches as well. And, you know, they come out better the bye week. Absolutely. And so, like we mentioned before, this, uh, edition of Blackshirt breakdown is dedicated solely to Heinrich Harburg, who looks like he is going to be QB one, uh, the rest of the season. Now we will, we will see, um, what Jeff Sims, uh, high ankle sprain, how that heals up, although it, it happened a while ago and, uh, at, at the Colorado game. Um, and we'll just kind of go, it's going to be a, a week by week thing with that. I feel like, um, at, at Nebraska. So, uh, just little stats here with Heinrich Harburg before we get going. He's completed 52% of his passes, 50 of 96. Now, it's not that great of a completion percentage. You'd like to get that higher than 52.1. Um, uh, so he's thrown for uh, 631 yards, four touchdown passes, two interceptions, and he has also uh, rushed, uh, leading rusher on the team, 352 yards uh, and three touchdowns. So, Jay, again, like I said, we um, have picked out some a few select throws here um, and some good ones, some bad ones, but we're going to start with this one uh, that, that kind of caught my eye back in the Northern Illinois game. He's under center. He goes through the play action fake with, I believe that is Ramir Johnson before Ramir went out uh, with a season ending shoulder injury and then just fires a dart, sets his feet, right. fires a dart. So just Jay, when you're, when you look at this specific throw from Heinrich, what do you see? Right. 
Well, first of all, this is I think the first throw of his of of his meaningful career here. His first start here and coming off that loss to Colorado right here. And I like it. He's big and tall right in the pocket. Mm -hmm. And you see when he sets his feet, if you could go back to when he's about to throw and pause it, look and we'll be able to compare it to when the throws aren't you know aren't his best. But watch how look how fluid he is right here, right? Ball mm -hmm. fake is good. He knows what he's doing right here, right? Look at this. He's looking downfield. Look at that big wide base. Look how big and strong he looks right there. Yeah. You see that mm -hmm. right there? Mm -hmm. Look at his feet right there, right? Look, I mean, he's in a power position whether you're going to throw it. Look at that. See how he strides in there? Look at that. That mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's what you want, right? Now, the follow through is, is, is a little bit, but look at that. He's able to release that thing with the right velocity, trajectory, and accuracy. Look at that. On the money, right? And, uh, you know, it's a, not the best spiral, but that's going to be based on when he gets his feet and follow through a little bit better but it's on the money right yeah and look where it, is, it allows marcus washington to catch it on the run right and get yards after 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 the catch so you watch this right here look at his feet one two three he already knows where he's going he kind of even looked off the safety there mm -hmm. good play action fake and a dart right there this is what probably gets the coaches excited and saying you know he can do something mm -hmm. right and it, and this isn't doesn't matter who you're playing this is the execution thing with him, right? Your feet, your 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 out. Your, you know, first of all, you get you're underneath the center, you're out of there quick, no wasted steps, right? We've seen where you kind of get tied up, right? So the the uh, intention and the urgency, sense of urgency, is there. And then now he, now he's cool, calm, and collective because I always say like if you win early in a down, you'll have success late. So he won early, right? Mm -hmm. Right. The urgency I, I, off off the off the under the center snap, good fake eyes now he's into his read this is just like practice right he knows where it's going because the linebacker sucked in but look at the trajectory there that he's able to because they can't get back in there after a play action so this is open anyways and now it's on the onus is on marcus washington at the time to win and find that pocket in the zone you're able to get six or seven more yards after contact or after catch uh yards after the catch be based on how heinrich harberg set it up uh from you know his urgency getting out uh in his drop so Heinrich fit that ball. So behind the second level linebacker, number 26, and in front of the defensive backs, there's just right. that so area the, right there, right? Yeah, so when you're running this route right here, and I know mm -hmm. this from a de defensive standpoint, right? Yeah. See, Marcus Washington is out close to the numbers. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He's and a, so, when the play, out, when yeah. the, so when the play action is to you, right? So if meaning I was a linebacker, right? So the, one of the two guys in the middle – Mm -hmm. You know this this pass is it's a cover four beater. It's going right to the to the hashes. Look how close he, he he delivers that thing on the hash with the right mm -hmm. trajectory right there. That's what you want right there, mm -hmm. right? So whether it's cover two, cover four, um, it's probably most likely cover four, or maybe cover six, where you're playing cover two to to one to the short side and and cover four to the to the field. And you see right there afterwards, number two. He's looking at the linebacker. He's like, "Hey, dude, you need to get back here deep." Well, there you go. Yeah. The play action, the play action pass, and the trajectory right there um, is 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 making it. Even if they did get a good drop, it was going to be a completed pass because of him winning early in in his uh in his drop. Uh, you know, from the under center. And this next one against Louisiana Tech, I really enjoyed this one live watching it, and then I went back and clipped it up. But this one is going to Billy Kemp, who is the slot receiver towards the field long side. Um, he's right in the middle between Thomas Fedoni, and I think that's Alex Bullock right there. So what I really appreciated about this was uh, Harburg's, I guess, patience to let the routes develop down the field. And I think Billy Kemp, once he clears number 21, that outside linebacker who's kind of playing in the slot there, I think Heinrich make, makes up his mind and delivers a, a really well-placed ball again behind that second level uh, of linebackers and in front of the safeties again. And it was a really good catch by Billy and um, I, I think a well-placed ball by ha ha Harburg here. Yeah, but again, look at it right here. I mean, it, again, before we look at the the route by Billy Kemp and then yeah. the, the, the end result, look at this right here. Now he's in shotgun, right? Mm -hmm. So you are he's already in his drop. But he's going to take a couple, a yard or two drop after it, right? So he can get more depth, right? So he's at a five, five step drop right here. He'll be at, you know, six, seven. Look at the base right here. Big, strong kid, right? Look at the base right there. Look at that. I mean, only reason I know a little bit about it because I studied, tried to study quarterbacks so I could pick up on things that when they did throw well, but look at what he's able to deliver it right there. 
again, it's the same thing that we saw in the previous play, mm-hmm. right? Big wide base, shoulder width apart, strength. He's in a power position, right? Which allows him to be one, have velocity, accuracy, and trajectory, you know, all, you know, bottled up to one and be able to stand strong in a pocket that's somewhat collapsing here, mm-hmm. right? So, this allows you to stay big, strong, and, and know exactly where you're going and gives you actually a clearer vision downfield, you know, because you're actually having your shoulder square in there. And then again, it's a really good route. Again, where is it at? Right there on the hash, mm-hmm. right? So yeah. what Billy Kemp did is he took the uh, outside linebacker hybrid guy, number 21, out a little bit, right? Yep. And and then got underneath him, right? So he's got a beat kind of zone coverage, right? Shake and bake, right? But Heinrich Harburg can't deliver this ball if his footwork is bad, right? Because you can't be patient. Because then every, when your footwork is bad, your your clock, your your quarterback clock speeds up, and then your accuracy is over. And then you see some of the bad passes that you know that he's had in the, you know, at times this year. Mm-hmm. And so you're able to deliver that in on with accuracy in between three guys. So watch how he's able to beat the linebacker here. So this linebacker sees Fedoni go over. He should get depth, right? Mm-hmm. He should be working that hash. Right. He should be that linebacker right there. And he should be communicating to the other linebacker over, over, over. So he should take Fedoni. That linebacker should help number 21 against Billy Kemp. You know, bad drop on him, bad communication or execution on them. But uh, uh, Heinrich Harburg is able to drive, you know, drop a dime here in between all three of them. Right. And actually, it's not bad coverage by that linebacker. He's past the first down marker. Mm-hmm. Well, what he does is he he fits it in between the corner um that's playing kind of like a cover three and uh where he's playing you know one to two right so he's kind of it's called cluing a little bit right you're playing outside in and guarding two guys that you know okay. he's guarding me in between one and two but again the corner has a good read Heinrich Harburg and Billy Kemp have a better route and better execution but it all starts with him being big in that pocket with a good base you know you know Heinrich Harburg if you look at some of the things that you know, with his accuracy issues, everybody's like, oh, his arm strength. Well, the arm strength is directly tied to your base. You never see a, a fastball pitcher throw the ball without strong legs and a strong base and a power position. It just doesn't happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and whether you're tackling somebody, whether you're throwing a ball while you're your catch, you got to be, you know, in a good athletic position. And it starts and stops there. And it's a good route by Billy Kemp, right? And it's a good, you know, execution by Heinrich Harburg to fit it in there even though 24 had a pretty good read and it was a so-so drop by uh, the inside linebacker or hook dropper there. Uh, first play of the Michigan game, we're going to skip ahead to that one. And again, like you said, Jay, his is a lower body when he gets it set and he knows where the ball is going to go and Duke can fire it in there. And I thought this was another really good play between him and Marcus Washington, which again, Marcus going down with that ACL, um, I mean that that hurts the offense. I know I know Marcus Washington's stats aren't going to blow you away, um, but I think he was somebody that Heinrich was maybe creating a connection with down the field with those explosive plays when Nebraska's offense did get them through the passing games. But uh, Jay, what did you see here against Michigan? Again, the first play of the second half. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it, it's uh you know you're fighting an uphill battle down twenty eight nothing on national TV. You feel embarrassed, but again. I can't keep saying it enough. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, we keep talking about it, keep talking about it. Now, granted, we're looking at his good passes and stuff like yes. that, but this yep. is what this is what you you know he needs to look at or should. I mean, look, the coaches are doing their jobs. So I don't need to tell them what they need to do. But for us, so we're doing a black shirt breakdown here, right? Again, he's in a shotgun here, five step drop already off the snap, kind of a you know quasi you know play action pass in the first play of the second half. You know, good base. Look at the wide base strong tall in the in the in the in the pocket michigan linebackers get a good drop here you're not playing play action or run the first play and they haven't ran a play in the second half mm-hmm. so good route by marcus washington to to beat uh man coverage in between beat number two and then it allows him to get 15 16 yards run after catch maybe even 20 he's still going i mean i shouldn't shortchange him there that's how you have uh explosive plays one you got to have guys that can beat off man Right. So he's beating him right here. Um, a little maybe it's a little bit of zone, but he's beating zone. So it looks like a cover four right there. So it allows when it's on time, on target, and with the right trajectory and velocity, what it allows what a, it allows the receiver to do is to catch it in stride, split safeties, and get 10, 10, 15 yards. Okay, so the ball's on the what 25 yard line. 
Yeah. Right. So let's count this. He catches it at the 45. That's a 20 yard catch. Right. And my, if my math is math and math and mm-hmm. right. That's five <laughs> yards after five yards after contact. We're at 10. Right. OK. He's probably close to 15. OK. That's 20 yards after contact or after the catch. 25 yards. We're still going closer to 30 yards. That's a 50 yard catch. Right. On it was a 54 yard catch. Yeah. OK. So he got. 34 yards, if my math is mathing, mm-hmm. uh, yards after the catch. All set up by quarterback having a good drop, uh, big, strong base, and the receiver running a good route, which then he catches it with his hands, right? And he's on time and on target, just like they drew it up, and it allows them to have an explosive play to start the second half. Yeah. I mean, this is this is teaching tape one-on-one on what you want to have in this offense as a quarterback and a receiver in execution. So it doesn't really matter who's out there. And now it does because Marcus Washington obviously is a, you know, he's played before. Old but guy veteran. Did, right. But you've done, if you run the right route and your quarterback is in his drop and delivering on time and on target, it's just like in baseball in the playoffs, right? Because I will talk about because of the play. A pitcher that is on the money is going to beat good hitting. So a pass that's on the target, on target and on time with the right velocity and accuracy. And you have a receiver that's winning, um, and doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to win by a, a big margin. Mm-hmm. You're going to have 34 yards after contact or after yards after catch. I mean, that's what you want right there. You talk about. I mean, that's an explosive play. Explosive play in the passing game is 20 yards. You double that and then some. So um, these are things that you know they you know they can be encouraged by, but you need it more on a consistent basis, uh, and especially with some younger receivers that are going to have to play bigger roles the last six games of the season. Absolutely. And skipping ahead to this play now, I I wanted to add some of his throws on the run because I think Heinrich is pretty good in that area too. Now he's an athlete. We all know that he can run. Um, We all know that Sims can run too. And Sims has has, uh, showed when he was out there that he was, um, he could complete some passes on the run as well. But I really enjoyed this play by Harburg as well. He's getting some heat. Um, I think number five here beats um, just the miscommunication up front by uh, Ethan Piper and Turner Corcoran. Olay's the number five Louisiana Tech, uh, Deshaun uh, Smith, I think his name was, Deshaun Hall, um, and uh, finds Billy Kemp here on a nice, um, accurate, low-risk uh, throw, I think, and Billy Kemp kind of does the rest. But it was a good good play by Heinrich Harburg here, right? Yeah, I mean, look, when he's a good, he's a good athlete and it's not yeah. always going to be perfect, you got to be you got to be able to deliver stuff off schedule, right? And that's mm-hmm. what he's able to do. It didn't look pretty, but what he was able to do He's used his athletic ability, good ball security here, right, where he's able to get in his drop right here. Good, Actually, see, his base was narrow there, but he was able to be athletic enough uh, to kind of dipsy-do him right there, right? Kind of yeah. gave him a little quasi – this is a little bit of a dead leg here, Steve. Mm-hmm. And so watch him right here. He has a good base. He needs to be a little bit wider right there, but it was able to kind of find – to, you know, dip inside right there, give him the dead leg, and then he got his eyes up right here. Yep. And then be athletic right there to deliver it on the money. And that's what, if, for it not being pretty, you know, uh, in his drop, you know, obviously it wasn't perfect. Now the protection didn't do it, but he was able to figure it out, had good pocket presence to climb in the pocket. He got his eyes up, up uh, downfield and his shoulders square. And he, and he can make these throws where he, he's being athletic and it's kind of like backyard football, right? And mm-hmm. this is probably – you know, what what he kind of does, you know, his best on a consistent basis. Now, you know, you know, that's where you get the kind of funky arm angle and stuff like that. Yep. Um, and you're not expecting a lot of yards after contact there or yards after catch. You keep con- contact the running backs, but yards after catch because you're throwing just trying to get the first down. The bigger part of this is is it's in, where you're backed up third and 14. Your chances of you getting it are not very good. Mm-hmm. Offensive line had a breakdown there in a in a TE stunt. And he was able to, right, adjust and be off schedule and get you a first down. And what you do is you keep the momentum, right, and it allows you to fight another day and extend the drive. So this is all positive here um, by Heinrich. Yeah, and uh, for this next uh, throw, positive throw that we're going to look at, it's that one against Northern Illinois along the Husker sideline that Thomas Fedoni caught, got one toe down. I think it was one, um, and it was just a really, really impressive play. Third and 15 um, conversion here, I think, and it was one of those where Heinrich just got rid of it right before he went out of bounds. He was, he had some pressure in his face as well, but it all, all worked out, but I think he put the ball, again, the ball placement was right where 
um, his guy could get it. And that was the only guy, not, not the defense. So I think I really appreciated this uh, play from Heinrich Harper. Right. He's flushed out of the pocket right here. And it, and you have good smarts right here where he throws to his roommate, right? That's probably what they've done a <laughs> yeah. you know, million times in the Hawks, you know, in the winter or whatever, but look, he's flushed out right here. So it's good pocket presence, right? A little inside mm -hmm. move on uh, Bryce Benhart eyes up, eyes up. And he throws it only where Fedoni is six foot six tight end can catch it um, or it's going out of bounds. And so it's a deep over route, right? His eyes are up, right? He feels the pressure. So that's good. He's not a sitting duck back there. And that's what he gives you. He gives you a chance to make off schedule plays, right? Yep. So, so he, he's flushing it. He knows he's not going to get a first down. So ideally you think he's already, I'm going to either run out of bounds or throw it. And uh, even though he's being hit, he has enough, arm yeah. strength right to kind of flip it there and obviously this is a phenomenal catch by Fedoni mm -hmm. uh to get a foot in and uh get pretty much an explosive play off schedule and so you know it's never going to be perfect with a new quarterback that hadn't played ever right mm -hmm. um and the protection isn't going to be perfect so what you do when you're not dealt the easy cards is also a big tell as well and this is where he can gain confidence from the coaching staff that he's able to execute some things that aren't perfect and he's making right decisions in the moment, right? You know, you don't want him trying to throw across his body where you see Billy Kemp right there. That's probably an interception. So yeah. he's throwing it only where his receiver can catch it or it's the punt team run out and get ready. And so Heinrich Harbour has thrown plenty of passes. I know we're just doing the good throws right now, but there have been plenty of almost interceptions from Heinrich Harbour. You could tell that he's still learning out there. Again, this is his first season of, um, action in his third year of college. So he's growing every single rep he takes. He's learning. He's learning about the speed of the game, the physicality of the game. And I thought this was kind of a, again, there the the consistency factor is just not there yet with, with Heinrich right. Harburg. And so I thought it kind of showed up with Illinois because he had a really good first half. Um, He was driving the ball down, making good sound decisions. And then all of a sudden he would, you know, have, <laughs> have a play like this where it's third and yeah. 10. He has Billy Kemp open and just yeah. overthrows him like he you know i know billy kemp's like five eight five nine receiver but if you give uh billy kemp an accurate pass here and he gets it who knows what he does after the catch right i mean billy kemp is a good player he can well, uh, maybe a skirt around for four yards and get this uh get this first down well it's the right read number one before we get the play started and number two you're right because the safety is covering him from depth right so what that's mm -hmm. going to allow billy kemp is a little bit more room to shake but let's look what he did Right. Look at how he threw it and he was on. He didn't strike. So when we saw him throw in the first couple of throws, he came all the way through it. Right. But watch how he just kind of look. Look where he's kind of on his back leg. Watch this right here. Yeah. Okay. A decent base right here. But watch it. He took like a hop. On, right. You see how he's on his back leg and his leg in his in his plant leg is left leg. So yeah. what that does is it makes your release even higher. When you got to drive that ball, especially to a shorter receiver, mm -hmm. you got to really throw it a fast, but not a fastball, but the trajectory has to be more of a downward uh, trajectory because obviously he's only 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, mm -hmm. And, you know, Billy Kemp is, is a pretty good athlete and you don't want Billy that to go through Billy Kemp's hands, right? And then number three catches it and takes it to the house, right? So you want to get this on Billy Kemp. You want to throw here, here, stop this real quick, Steve. Okay. You want this ball on his body. You get what I mean? So yeah. you want this trajectory on, right his numbers. On, the, on the number one. That's where you want it. Because you want him to catch it almost with his body. Watch 14 bailing out of there. Stop mm -hmm. route. It needs to be on him right now. Right? He so needs to need catch to be it. Released quicker. Way quicker. Yep. And then and right. And then he needs to be up those numbers right there. You know, like how when mm -hmm. we do high school guys, what I say, hit the numbers and then hit the sideline. You need to split these guys right here. You mm -hmm. see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's that comes from experience. And you see Matt Rule right there. Me and Matt yep. Rule are saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. If I was coaching, Coach Jay would be saying, he would be hard. You, you got to get him to him quicker. See there? Yep. See what he's saying? Matt's Matt saying knew. the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So that that's the experience right there. And it's almost one of those things to where your lack of a, lack of finer details mm -hmm. in pr maybe pr saying in the huddle, Billy, I'm coming to you quick. Rip it off quick, right? Because even if, uh, Steve, you do it, you you force um, Illinois, even if you don't get the first time, you force Illinois to burn a, burn a uh, timeout and you get the punt anyways. Yeah. But the clock will run if they don't. So 
these are just things that right here, it, it all is based on, look, he didn't go right through it, right? He didn't he didn't drive through there, right? He didn't try to fit that bad boy in there. He needed to get it out quick. It, you don't even drop right here. It's like you get the ball and throw it, mm -hmm. right? It's like one of the, you see him warming up, you get it right here. You don't need to take it. Like It's got to be quick. One, two, bam. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's what that's. You know, generally, I mean, these are just things. Look, he's not, at the end of the day, this is he's only <laughs> played in four games yes, in like exactly. four years. Yep. He ain't played since high school. Mm -hmm. And that wasn't really even close to this. So as much as we're talking about what he needs to give, I mean, he's learned, dude, he went. I mean, I keep saying this to people. He went a whole year with a coach or not. And I, again, granted, this is widely known. Yep. With a, with, with a offensive coordinator and a coach that wouldn't mm -hmm. coach him or even gave him a chance to get back. So mm -hmm. literally he's in a reset right now kindly weirdly enough we're talking about it in the bye week mm -hmm. absolutely and so uh jay only five minutes left here and and for this last one again we talked about hit how good he is on the run on the on the run how accurate he can be and this right. one i thought was a miss and, and it would and this is a, a throw to malachi coleman that i think give give coleman a chance and and i don't right. think uh harbor gave uh, coleman a chance here again on a on a throw on the run situation that i thought he's usually pretty good at this is just a miss yeah maybe this is just a lack of continuity with a new receiver really mm -hmm. deep good job climbing in the pocket right yes and you, you know it was a miss and i think the whole like sidearm you know, you, it's getting too good to you right now, right? You're mm -hmm. feeling yourself a little bit. You, he you, was feeling himself, yeah, I think. Yeah, in yeah, this yeah. One. Yes. yeah. You, 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 you think you're Aaron Rodgers? You, you're not Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. You're Mister Rodgers right now. You need to, you, you know, you, you would like to have the same type of pass that he threw to Fedoni mm -hmm. um, against Louisiana Tech, I think. Right? Get it to where only lead him right to the sideline and make Malachi, you know, uh, toe drag swag over there on the sideline. And yeah. it's a good ride by Malachi, so this is a plus. Good job climbing in the pocket, right? Excellent. Good, yeah. job, good job of squaring his shoulders up. Good job for looking for work, right? Mm -hmm. Putting the pressure on the defense. Now look at this, right? He needed to get it, right? That little jump throw right there makes it sail, and the accuracy is just a yard or two or three or four off, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Look how deeper that is, you know? And so that's just comes from experience. It comes from – um repetition but then also it comes from like all right look, look when i do you know you just it's, it's a very unique uh ability to kind of be calm under situations like this um and understand the the simple play is going to look spectacular right mm -hmm. absolutely so um yeah i mean you know we'll see how the rest of this season shakes out six games um i think heinrich harberg has looked you know after everything we we said with his career arc, how it how it started at Nebraska, like he hasn't played. This is his first action since high school about three years ago. So um, there's a lot learning of learning going on right now, Jay, and um, we're all um, here along for the ride as uh, Matt Rule, Marcus Satterfield try to piece together something with with the available pieces that they have with right. this offense to try to score some points. Um, but Jay, real quick, um, two minutes left here. What what is your vision for these next six games? Um, I guess a lot of people around here are talking potential bull berth. Uh, it's right. a long time from now, but uh, what what are your overall thoughts for this uh, final stretch here? Uh, well, I mean it's 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 a phenomenal opportunity. Like Matt Rule said it best, there's not a team that they can't beat, and there's not a team that can't beat them. But uh, you know, mm -hmm. it starts to stop this week with Northwestern. They're going to come in, you know, motivated. Nebraska oh, should yeah. be motivated based on losing to them last year. Mm -hmm. You knock this one out, then you can start having some conversations. And and this this one is just as big as Illinois. So big win coming going into the bye week, even bigger win coming out of the bye week. Um, and so it's an it, it Look, it's a game they should win. Go out there and do it, and then uh, you know rest, reset, and do it again next week. For sure, good stuff as always, Jay. So uh, for Steve Mark, he is Jay Foreman, and that was a black shirt breakdown Heinrich Harburg edition for the bye week with the Huskers. We will catch y'all later.